Well, the book really starts off with the premise uh, in asking the question, can countries reform themselves out of their current circumstances? And in the range of case studies that I look at, there's more than 20 case studies in the book in various shapes and forms. I mean, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, reforms do make a difference. Your choices make a difference. Your inheritance is not necessarily the the feature that determines the developmental outcome. And this is especially important to Africa right now because we're about to double our population numbers over the next generation. We're going to be more than 2.5 billion people in the African continent, the largest source of young people in the world. And we do have to come up with different developmental answers to those that we've managed over the last 60 years, which have traditionally been around trying to close off our economies from the outside world, uh, to try and redistribute our economic wealth to across racial or identity grounds. Uh, and uh, it's been really about a externalist view of development in the sense that financing and assistance in the form of aid had to come from abroad. And what my book argues through these various case studies is that that's actually done us very badly. Africa's share of global per capita income has in fact fallen from 30 to 15 percent over the last 60 years, whereas somewhere like Southeast Asia, for instance, has gone also from 30 percent uh, 60 years ago uh, to more than 100 percent today. And so the answers really lie in what countries, including some of those in Southeast Asia, some of those which are looked at in this book, like Singapore and Vietnam, have done. Countries which have managed similar reform processes, including those in Europe, like Spain, for instance, and Poland, to take two different generations of reform have done, or Mexico in Latin America. But it also looks at examples in Africa, like Botswana, uh, 